So Luke 2, verse 6, I'm going to read this. You'll follow along with me. And while they were there, the time came for her baby to be born. She gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him snugly in strips of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no lodging available for them. Amen. Lord, a blessing to the reading and the hearing of his most holy word. Amen. Let me again just thank you for coming out on Christmas uh, to where it would not be just me here. Amen. And we praise that you will do that and will be a blessing to you to get you back to your Christmas Sunday. Look, we have dealt with uh, uh, words for Christmas that I hope we can take with us. Uh, we have done hope. We have done uh, patience. Um, and oh gosh, the other one just slips my kindness. Amen. Y'all was listening. Oh my gosh. Amen. Amen. Boy, talk about making me feel good. Amen. Look, our word today we're going to finish off is with shelter. Okay, shelter. Please know that I don't know that these words are spiritually uh, uh, connected in common theme, but they are biblical. And I would hope that you would put them together like pieces in a quilt. Uh, we don't know how the quilt is going to look until we put the thread together and sew the pieces together. Now, I believe here, church, that the birth of Christ will bring forward several different themes and issues that apply to the cultural challenges of that day and also of the present, okay? The bottom line is that you have an unwed pregnant lady, you have a suspicious fiance trying to hold on to the promise that the angel uh, has told him about. You've got an old man, Simeon, who have placed death on hold uh, uh, just so he could behold the prophecy and see God's son. Then you've got family ties with cousins born with divine purpose in order that they may, <clears throat> excuse me, change the world through John and Jesus. And then you have punishments for failure to believe uh, in these divine births and God's word. Now, hidden in these common themes is that all of these challenges, they become obstacles to the fulfillment of the promise of Jesus Christ, right? Now, one such one that you have to acknowledge scripturally is that this unwed mother and this fiance had no place, right, in order to birth this king, okay? You cannot uh, engage the scripture without asking yourself why these words are here. The scripture could have ended with and laid him in a manger period, but the scripture placed an indictment upon the culture, right? In the present day by saying, because there was no lodging available for them. We, we know it from another biblical uh, perspective, there was no room at the end. Now, it's interesting here, church, because the scripture takes the opportunity that in this fantastic birth to highlight the place where the birth took place. It indicates that the intention was not to be born in a manger, right? So they didn't start off in the manger. Right? They started off with, a, with, with determining and seeking another place other than the manger. 
but there was no other available lodging. So this king would have to be born in the humility of a manger, right? Now, manger, when no one else could take you there, right, could take you, that is sturdy enough and open enough to receive you, okay? Now, here then, God will do the rest of the cleaning. He will have the protection of the entry of the new life, but it would not be in the palace. It would not be in the top hotel. It would be in the humility of a manger. Now, this reminds me here, church, of the challenges that we face as a culture, as we seek and as we look at our homeless populations today, and not just those who are homeless, but those who just cannot afford what we call the American dream of just a house with the fence, a couple kids, a couple dogs, and life is great. They continue to tell me in my 20s, in my 30s, all the way now up into my 50s, that your generation will make less than the generation before you. Wow, that is something. That the economy and the challenges of the economy will only get worse. So you will not be able to make more and, and be greater economically and financially than the generation before. Right, right. So, so, so here now, here now, this woman who is carrying a king is unable to reside in the most desirable place and must seek elsewhere to find one of the most essential elements to our living, shelter. We need a place to stay, right? Now keep in mind here now, this manger now was protection from an insecure king who worried about whether he would keep the throne. His desire was to keep this baby, which should have been an easy find for him because he was looking for where possibly a king is supposed to be but yet it was hidden in the humble settings, right, of a manger. Here in this humility is where a king could be born. It was also here, church, a place of destination that wise men with expensive gifts and sheriffs, shepherds with only staffs could rest and relax and give praise to the new king, not in the best inn, but in a manger. It was even a place here, church, that had been taken over now by God, that God would place his divine locator, his, 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 his open and modern day GPS, which is a star that rests above the manger. That if you follow this star, you will find this new king. So I will place my star not above the king's palace. I will, I will not place it above the great inn. I will not place it above the great, the great temple. I will place it above the humility of a manger. Right? Why is that, church? Because the manger would not have the audacity to prejudge you. It could not. Manger was not perfection. It was not perfectly built, right? It was a place that was not desirable. It was not your first choice, right? So the manger cannot prejudge a sinner. Right? The manger welcomes in its shelter, it welcomes the sinner. The ranger receives us as we are the single mother or single father who feels rejected by the world can find peace in the manger. The brokenhearted who have, whose heart had continued to be stepped on and disrespected can find peace in a manger. 
the sick who have been diagnosed with, with you know, with long-term sickness or the paralyzed who can't even walk or the blind who cannot see can find comfort in the manger. The manger is shelter for the disenfranchised. It is sheltered for those whom are hurt. It is sheltered for those who don't have the economic security. It is shelter for those who continue to end up in bad situations, but more than that, end up continuing to be judged for their past and not for the potential of what they can be. We find comfort in this dirty place because out of it, a king can arise. Yes, yeah, yeah that's it, the manger, the manger out of it, an insecure father can become a, 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 a confident. A ridiculed and talked about young potential mother can be made holy and protected all the way into eternity to the point that you can't talk about the king without mentioning his mama. Oh, yes, 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 yes. That, that's it here, church. It's shelter. And, 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 and I want to say here that the church must be shelter like the manger because it cannot prejudge by what you got on. It cannot prejudge by where you've been. It cannot prejudge by how you talk, how you walk. We have no reason to prejudge and to be prejudiced against nothing. Just like the manger could not say, Mary, you can't come here. The manger is happy that it got some kind of superstar coming this way, right? So that's shelter, right? Church has to be shelter, right? Because here in the shelter, the church must be, and it must be called into being on this Christmas Sunday, right? The single mother who is ostracized can come here and feel and be fulfilled. The former felon can come here and be forgiven. The brokenhearted, the heart can be mended. The sick can be made stronger. The church bears the burden of shelter like the manger. Now, this is the thing, though. Shelter is never meant, right, to be permanent. Here's what I mean by that. Mary and Joseph, in order to fulfill the promise for this child, cannot lock themselves up in a manger. Right? It, is, it is a protection for the moment and for the trial but it will take a life of moving out of that shelter to fulfill the promise, right? Just as us, we cannot stay trapped in just what we do and have it be defined by the four walls in which we reside right now, right? Right, I cannot, look, 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 there, there, are, uh, there is a, uh, there and now and now it's a bit tougher uh, uh, with the challenge of the culture. But I, I saw this uh, I saw this commercial I saw this cartoon uh, uh, on on social media and it is it shows it shows the reindeer sitting there, right? And it shows Rudolph going to talk to Santa and he said to Santa, "The reindeer want to work from home." I'm glad I wasn't the only one. I thought that was hilarious. But it is speaking to the pandemic mindset that now I got it good at home. I'm going to stay at home. I got everything at home. I got Instacart at home. I got Uber Eats at home. I ain't got to do nothing outside the house no more. I can even have church at home. Come on, talk to me, somebody. I hope, I hope, I hope, I hope my Zoom, I hope I'm getting some good emojis on my Zoom. Right? You must at some point leave the shelter because you cannot hide from life forever. In the same way that Mary and Joseph could not keep this baby in the safety of the manger, they had to push forward in their life 
they had to experience it. There was joy. The ministry would have been halted if they never would have left the manger. The church will be halted if we never leave the manger. The church will be halted if you don't leave your house. Right? Come on, talk to me, somebody. Here then, here, the church bears this burden of it, right? It's the unsuspecting because in the unsuspecting nature, and I bet there were others who turned their nose up at this manger, out of it came a king, right? Here, now I'm almost done here. Let me share this with you here. And let me tell you, so I, I had a flight. I was supposed to get out on Wednesday. I ended up not leaving until Thursday because of the uh, storm. But you spend enough time in the airport from the morning all the way into the evening. You come up with something to preach about. Amen. Amen. I hope in these in these years I've been I've been with you that I know I didn't come with I didn't preach I didn't preach the cuckoo bird I didn't preach jail I didn't preach a whole bunch of stuff we continue to try with our creativity in order that we can apply it scripturally Amen Hear me on this Let me go back to my Boy Scout tree selling extravaganza Amen which we are finished with because it's Christmas Amen. And I've not asked you for not one of you to buy any tree. Amen. All right. All right. Let me say this here. We say uh, uh, we do this at a church and in, in the parking lot of the church because they sponsor the charter by which the Boy Scouts have. Let me say this here. This church. When it gets below 30 degrees, they open the entire church and they become a shelter. Okay, imagine that. Let me stop here and say, I am not suggesting this for peoples before you start calling up every deacon, okay? I'm not suggesting that, okay? I've come to you about Nehemiah for affordable house. I'm trying to, we trying to give people like Joseph, professional carpenters, an opportunity to live in the booming city, right? I'm not saying that we turn this into a homeless shelter, but hear what this church does. OK, when it gets too cold, they open it up. Right. And it becomes a shelter. The entire church. I don't know when I walked in that they, I don't think they had uh, cots or beds in the sanctuary, but they did have they have an upstairs. And they have a downstairs. The women coming in will stay upstairs uh, uh, in these uh, on these cots that we see when we go camping. Right. The men are downstairs. OK, I don't believe any one of them who come have a membership at the church. It doesn't matter. Right. They just need shelter for the night. Right? Now, 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 imagine that right now, like like these guys, they come. You can see there are a lot of issues. There's some mental there's some mental issues that you see with some folks. There are people who are standing out there smoking cigarettes, right? We have actually, we have actually found in the midst of our trees, somebody left some marijuana in the midst of the tree. And I believe they left it because they couldn't take it in there, right? And, and uh, how sad they would be that they didn't find it back out there when they got back out there, amen? Not around no Boy Scouts, we can't have that. Hear me on this. They took them in all who they could in order to give them shelter for the night. Is that not the church? Right? So, so here, even if it's on Sunday, hear me on this, even if it's on Sunday, right? Sunday services will become interrupted or altered in order that it can provide for the shelter. I can only imagine the discussion, right? This church has had generations of family. I could, I can just hear it's the same issues that I would hear here. Gosh, we gonna do this? I mean, my mother was buried here. My my grandmother was buried here, right? 
or, or, or walking over to the bulletin board or to the plaques and say, that's my name. That's, and we're going to allow people in here like this. Whatever discussion that they went through or whatever it took, they got over it because they saw it was bigger than their personal long-term attachments to a building. It was about providing shelter for people whom they didn't even know. That if it only be for one night, let us be your manger. Because amongst these who are coming in, there's got to be another king. Right? The homeless brothers and sisters in these moments get shelter and it falls underneath the cross. Right? It's the warmth of the moment. It is undeniable that this people of God that they sacrifice, but the warmth that they feel comes underneath the cross. I don't know that I see they may welcome them to church or they may ask for them to come back. And just as selling trees, you know, you begin to see, you may see some of the same people. You may see different people. You also see people rushing, you know, so they can get in there before, you know, before it closes up for the night. But that door will remain open until the beds are full. That's shelter. Right? right, That's shelter. Can the church then, in our own context, our context may be different, right? But can we in some way emulate that? Right? As that manger did for Mary and Joseph with the baby. What can we do if it is benevolence, if it is a Nehemiah, if it is a momentary opportunity? for somebody that's going through that we can give them a blanket and a bed in order that they can get through the night. That's the Christmas season. The gift that these people give. Right? And think about this, church, I'll be done. This was some of the worst weather uh, that we have seen all across the nation. But there's a place out on First Avenue that had warmth for some people. The heat didn't break down and then able to feed them at night and in the morning. That's the church. That's shelter. And can we be that? Their population out there, their membership, I talked to that pastor from time to time, are, are low, if not lower, right, than what we have here. But their hearts are right. It doesn't take a large amount of people to have the right heart for the people who need help. Can that be us? Will it be us? In that sense, then, as we move forward, let us find our place in this spiritual history where we are the manger, where we are the shelter. And for that, we will have the greatest opportunity to say these two words that permeate throughout this season. Merry Christmas. Right? Merry Christmas. Here is a blanket and be warm. Amen. Come on, let's praise God for his holy word.